Everybody, this is Francesca welcome to my channel back to art girl thank you for joining me today today I would do in my very very first resin pour I'm so excited this is still an experimental phase of my pouring experience so today I'm going to be using an Australian brand of resin called Holcroft I'll put the link on the description and I got this one from Riot Arts and Crafts online and this one is a two-part resin, obviously part A and part B, as they all normally are. And this is a one-to-one -one ratio mix. So in the box you'll find part A, part B, there's a mixing stick and the instructions. So this one has a curing time of about 24 hours, as the instructions say. And this is going to be my very first time I use resin. How exciting! So what I've decided to resin today was one of my very first acrylic pour canvases that I did a few weeks ago. And there is one that I wasn't so convinced with and is not definitely my favorite. So I'm going to experiment pouring the resin on the one that I'm a little bit iffy on anyway. These last three that have remained, they are definitely my favorites. So I'm not going to experiment on them. I will do them later once I master the process and I will resin this particular one here. Now, I have also found the large press pins that I was looking for for a while and I found them at Officeworks. I'll put a link to those in the description as well. So to hammer them into my canvas, I'm just using a paper towel to cushion the blow of the hammer. I don't want to break them because they are only plastic. And I'm just hammering one on every corner. And the reason why I do this is that so the canvas can be lifted up from the surface of my tabletop and the resin will run off the canvas and coat the sides. I have been able to find some really great silicone measuring cups online on Etsy. I'll put the description in the link below as well with some really great silicone mixing sticks. So these mixing sticks, you can just keep reusing them because once the resin hardens on them, you can just break any residue resin off and the sticks are as good as new and ready to be reused. Now I'm also big on safety, so I found on eBay a mask, a respiratory mask that is just going to help stay safe and not inhale any of the fumes, very important. Now I like to clean the equipment before I get started. I did give them a bit of a washout, but I decided that I'm just going to do a final clean of the measuring cups just with some tape, just in case there's any dust left inside the measuring cups you don't want that mixing in with your resin and then pouring it onto your canvas because i'm sure you'll be able to see those dust particles so just with normal painters tape i just run the tape over the sticks and inside the mixing cups and gave them a clean out now we're measuring the resin Equal parts of part A and part B. As I said, this is a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. And I'm just going to be using the smaller mixing cup today. So here I am, obviously, pouring part A into the mixing cup. And then equal measurement of part B. And then, with our silicone stick, this resin needs to be mixed for two to three minutes. 
and I just timed it on my watch and you just make sure that you scrape down the sides and the bottom of the cup and keep mixing, not too fast, just steadily. You don't want to create more bubbles. So here I am ready to go with the canvas. One last check, however, before we do start pouring, and that is to make sure that your canvas is level. And I have this little level, which is very, very cute and a perfect size for this job, just to make sure that my canvas is level on my tabletop. All good to go. So here we are with the resin. I've stirred it for three minutes. It's pretty smooth, doesn't have too many bubbles. And so I'm just pouring into the center of the canvas to start with and then at the outside. And then all over. <laughs> I'm not using all of it because I'm not sure if it's going to all be a little bit too much because at this stage I'm really not sure how much I need for my little 8 by 8 inch canvas. Trial and error I guess. I'm just spreading the resin all over the surface of the canvas as evenly as I can. So the reason why it's taken this a while is because it wasn't quite covering evenly and I didn't quite know why at the time. So to eliminate any bubbles on the surface of the canvas I've got my burner and I just give a quick torch on the surface just to get rid of any bubbles. However, the resin wasn't quite covering that well. So I thought, mm, I've just got to ease it around and spread it over again. It took a while though, the resin just didn't want to adhere at all to the canvas. In hindsight though, I know now that that shouldn't have happened, but at the time, I just put it down to my first experience. So somewhat satisfied, I decide to give it a final torch and just let it sit. No, wait, there's still a bit of a divot in a few places. So let's just add some more resin, I guess. So as I said at the time, I didn't see why this was happening. I had no idea. To finish up, I just scrape the bottom of the canvas with a stick just to eliminate any resin drips so that those drips don't pull the rest of the resin down with them. Now I wonder if you've been able to work out why I was having so much trouble with that resin. Well, I finally figured it out and unfortunately it was a rookie mistake. Before I put resin on my canvas, I was actually meant to clean it. 
I was meant to clean the silicone oil off the surface of the canvas. Not having done that gave me this result right here. This is the cured resin on my canvas. Can you see all of those holes and how that resin has pulled away from the edges? So now I know that it's because I didn't clean my canvas to clean the silicone oil off the surface. So of course that resin isn't going to properly stick on it. I know, I know, as I said, rookie mistake and I put my hand up and owning up to it, but look, you know, all part of the learning process, I say. Doesn't look too great, does it? Well, I've learnt my lesson, I can tell you that much. And I just thought I'd show you the back of the canvas as well. Another rookie error that I made from the very, very beginning, even before I poured the paint, was to not mask up the back of my canvas. And you do that just with normal painter's tape, just to cover the back so those residue drips don't look as ugly as they do. I'll know for next time. Doesn't that look ugly? I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but hey, you know what? I do, I made the mistake. Somebody has to, I guess, right? Yes, look at that close up. So I guess there's only one verdict to this experiment. What do you think the result will be? Before I show you the final result, I would just like to remind you to please like, share and subscribe to help me grow this channel so you can watch me undertake more experiments like this one. For me, this one was a big thumbs down. I failed with this one. I should have cleaned my canvas and I didn't. Big fail. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe and see you soon.